Nations in the world are increasingly recognizing that humanity has reached a new juncture in terms of risks due to human pressures on the planet. The United Nations is now translating the Millennium Development Goals into Sustainable Development Goals, and there's an increasing insight that global sustainability must be part of the picture. The question then for science is, what does this mean in terms of a science-based framework for a safe development for humanity without risking too large negative impacts due to overshoot in terms of pressures on the planet. The scientific worry when it comes to entering this dialogue is of course the growing unequivocal evidence that humanity has entered a truly new situation. We have empirical evidence that we are now in a new geological epoch, the Anthropocene, where we're exiting the Holocene, the extraordinarily stable interglacial period over the past 10,000 years that it has provided the foundation for human development and the modern world as we know it, and that we now constitute an, a quasi-geological force of change at the planetary scale. We must simply relate and navigate a world which we could call the, the 369 reality. We are in the mainstream of climate science moving rapidly towards a three degree warming above pre-industrial levels which takes us into a tremendous danger zone in terms of support for development. We are in the sixth mass extinction of species, which undermines genetic diversity and ecosystem services, which is fundamental for food production, energy supply, freshwater supply, and therefore human well-being. And we're committed to a world of nine billion people by 2050. And moreover, in a world where we're moving from a minority having caused the largest bulk of environmental problems so far, the rich minority that stepped into the Industrial Revolution to a very positive development that we're now seeing four, five, five, six billion people in the world aspiring and also affording a lifestyle which, if adopted to the same extent to the lifestyles that have caused the problem so far, would push the pressures even further. So there's a very strong scientific rationale for a transition to a future that diminishes risks of negative impacts that could undermine prosperity. In this context, one also needs to recognize that it's not only our pressures on the planet, it's also that we have such a strong empirical base that resilience really matters. That when we push systems from local forest systems and wetlands all the way to the big polar regions too far, we cannot exclude tipping points that can ultimately totally shift the life support base for humanity. This is a biosphere shaped by humanity. We're putting ourselves at risks, but it also means we're in the driving seat to adopt, if we could, a new trajectory and a framework for sustainable development goals could help this process. Now, recently we've published uh, a science-based proposition of how such a framework could look like. This draws upon the tremendous advancements in Earth system science over the past 30 years. It connects scientists under the new Future Earth Initiative, which is the new effort of interdisciplinary Earth system research for global sustainability, gathering and integrating the global environmental change programs under the International Council for Science and, 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 and Partners, into a framework that does the following. First, it, it adopts a paradigm of human development within safe Earth system boundaries which is a large shift compared to our current sustainable development paradigm, which still remains largely the isolated pillars of economic, social, and environmental development. Here we're saying that the economy must be the method to provide prosperity within societies, and the societies must operate within the life support systems on Earth. We're also saying that this paradigm can be connected both with development endeavors, such as the Millennium and Development Goals, everything from poverty alleviation to sustainable lifestyles, which if combined with science-based planetary must-haves, essentially what is the safe operating space, can be unified under one set of sustainable development goals where we use the scientific evidence that sustainability is now a prerequisite for human well-being as the entry point. We believe that in doing so, we can translate this integrated framework into six broad sustainable development goals, and that these sustainable development goals can be uh, communicated in a, in a unified way where we get rid of the isolated pillars and instead think of ecological and social integration in full. 
We bring this forward in six sustainable development goals that we think, uh, based on evidence, would provide the comprehensive, to say, palette of what is required for human development, from lives and livelihoods, which includes health, education, democracy, and, to say, stable societies, to food security, sustainable water supply, universal sustainable energy supply, healthy and productive ecosystems as basis for well-being, and the whole area of governance and predictable institutions. Now, the interesting thing with this framework is that when we think of the economy as a subset of society and society operating within life support systems, defining quantitative targets for one sustainable development goals, for example, food security, forces us to truly integrate social and ecological targets. For example, if we set as a goal for humanity to eradicate hunger by 2050, a sustainable development framework which is unified places us in a position to also say what are then the global sustainability targets that need to be fulfilled in order to allow us to eradicate hunger. And this would then include targets such as a transition to a stable climate future, a reduction of deforestation which today undermines freshwater supply to agriculture, a safeguarding of biodiversity as a basis for productive agriculture. So you would have a set of global sustainability targets which are set together with the social and economic targets into one unified set of strategies in support of policy. And this in turn can then be translated to nations, businesses and societies across the world. And so we've done for all these six. So altogether this provides a, an opportunity to move from a fragmented to an integrated and from a local to a global sustainability approach to human development which we believe from a science perspective gives us a, a much higher possibility of a prosperous future on planet Earth in the century to come.